If you're it's Emily Fox, today's gonna be a weekly reading vlog where I attempt to get my together because I just survived surgery about two weeks ago. And I'm doing great, by the way, like really, really good. But I haven't been reading much. I also need to catch up to, you know, cleaning up the house. I have four cats to take care of, three kittens, and they're crazy. And yeah, spring cleaning. I'm feeling the need to start cleaning the house because it's starting to warm up and I really want to get back to renovating, decorating the house. And the cats are old enough that I can now put them in a room and like paint the walls and open the windows so they will not die from the fumes or something. So I really want to get it together. That's basically the goal for this week. And yes, reading, of course, priority. So the first book I want to finish is her Majesty Royal Covet, which was a recommendation by you guys, actually. You made me do this. This is a adult fantasy, like a, do you call this an urban fantasy? It's modern witches. That's what I've, I've been begging for. And I've been told that it's, was it low stake? People were saying kind of wholesome. I don't know. I'm currently halfway through it. I'm not sure I would call it wholesome, but I'm enjoying it-ish so far. I'm not 100% sold. Um, I mentioned it in my, I think it was my wrap up in the currently reading section and so far it's okay but since so many of you love it, I'm hoping I will start loving it too. Audiobook wise, I'm currently listening to Mansfield Park. I'm about halfway through it too and I'm hoping to finish it because I was supposed to last month but you know, surgery. Um, and then I want to watch a movie. That's the plan this week. So maybe it's sunny, you know, I'll go on walks and be able to listen to big chunks of it so I can watch the movie adaptation. And I'm also reading one ebook because I've been neglecting it in the last two weeks because I keep falling asleep super early. <laughs> uh, I'm at chapter 28 and that's exactly 50%. This is the team, okay? This week, we're just catching up to everything. This one, my goal is to read one page. Like I'm barely exaggerating. I just want to get back into the habit. I lose it so quickly with ebooks. I don't know why. Um, so we're gonna... <laughs> get it together and I want to, this one I don't think I'm going to finish it, but I want to finish this one and the audiobook. That's the goal. I'm also hoping to start another nonfiction because it's usually what I do. I'll read a couple pages here and there, maybe a chapter here and there, here and there. And I just finished this one that I mentioned in my uh, wrap up for April. <laughs> and this one I had started in like January. To be fair, there's been a lot going on but I want to start another one. So maybe we'll choose. There's a few on the cabinet that, you know, don't count for my shelf for this year, the challenge. So they're separated, separated. I've been speaking French a lot, so I'm losing my English. You'll, you'll have to bear with me. And yeah, that's the goal. Choosing one. Don't even need to start it, Emily. Just choose one. So yeah, this is going to be the vlog. Trying to finish some stuff, cleaning, and uh, a lot of kittens because, oh my God, they're going wild and like running everywhere in the house. So I feel like I'm seeing so much dust and like just, I don't know what they're doing. They find things that I've, I haven't seen. <laughs> it doesn't help. The windows are open. So I feel like everything is coming out. Okay. So <laughs> that's the plan. I'm going to go and vacuum downstairs, which I did two days ago, but it still feels very dusty. Black kittens, <laughs> they make my house feel so dusty. <laughs> so yeah, let, let's... Let me show you some clips of them because they're adorable, but they're driving me cuckoo. Like, look at this. I have so many scratches from the little girl. She is adorable. She's adorable, but a bully, okay? Y you have to fear her. Uh, we actually have to give everyone an official name too. Actually, let me put the pools. There's two pools that we need to make. Uh, the first one is the little girl. I was thinking Nibbles, which was so so popular it could be a nickname um but i don't know if i can still put the polls on the screen or in the comments but someone else recommended or suggested freya which i do like because people were talking about oh call her like cindy because of the little beauty mark or like marilyn it doesn't work with her personality she is a tough tough girl okay she, she could be the queen of the universe if she wanted to. So it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And Nibbles was to make fun of the fact that yes, she bites everything, but like it's too cute for her, so that kind of works. But Freya is an option. Vote, choose, one or the other. And Mom was also a name that people weren't fully on board with. I wanted to call her Lilith, which was not popular, which whatever. Um, so the two options are 
Octavia, like Octavia E. Butler, one of my favorite authors, which that works. Or there was another name I was hoping to give another cat in my lifetime, but I am thinking about keeping all four cats. We're going to address that later in the vlog. Let's not even... <laughs> I shouldn't say that out loud, but I'm thinking about it. And I will not need another cat name for the next 10, 20 years. So I also liked Persephone, like Persephone, but in French, uh, which a lot of you were like, why is none of these called a French name? Persephone. And then since it's French, we could give her the nickname Pear. So it's easy for everyone. And I love pears. I love pears. So how do we feel? Octavia? Persephone. Whichever. I will probably still call her Kitty, though, because she responds to that. But maybe we can build up, you know? Call her V or Pear. You choose. But ultimately, it's my decision. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I'm gonna go deal with them a little bit. You'll get some clips. I'll get back to reading and then we'll discuss my uncertainties. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sunday mornings hiding under covers I don't mind staying in with you Play your favorite movie Laying right beside me I don't mind when it's just us two That corner coffee shop we like to go Late night walks with you to take me home With you I never Okay, um, I'm... I'm understanding why people said I would like this book because I, <laughs> it's not funny, but I'm laughing because the irony of my description of the book and then, okay, I get it now. I get it now. So the book is picking up. I feel like things make a lot more sense. Like the, I can see the plot a bit more, um, but for some reason I can't make myself read more than a couple of pages. A day except today i read a bit more the sun is going down i really want to try to sneak in a little walk listen to the audiobook while doing that but yeah i did read a little bit more because i was stuck under the pile of kittens so that helps you know i, I can't make a sound so there's that they're going wild so i'm hoping they're gonna exhaust themselves before nighttime and i'm gonna go do the same thing for myself so i need to try to sneak in a little bit of the ebook before bed and then i'll have done all three in one day not finished them but read a little bit of all three that is a successful day <laughs> okay update time i've made some great progress with the book things are definitely picking up and i am enjoying it more like story-wise than uh, i did in the beginning and i i think my issue is that i'm not super emotionally invested but it's like a light the topic is not that light but like it screams summer read to me like a beach read <laughs> i don't know how to explain it it's just that i have no issue putting it down but i'm intrigued enough to read it you know so so far so good i've made some great progress with the audiobook too i am confident i'm going to be able to uh read nope watch the movie by the end of the week so that's great uh, the kittens are absolutely wild right now, um, so I thought I would show them to you because I've mentioned quickly in the intro that I'm currently considering keeping them all, which is probably a dumb idea, but here's the thing. I feel like in the last three years at this point, um, I've been really overwhelmed. I've just had too much on my plate, and I felt like the timing of the cats was terrible. Still think it was the worst timing ever, but... I'm afraid to rehome some of them and regret it. And like they're eight weeks old right now, which is when you, you know, start thinking about it. Although they can benefit from like a couple more weeks to socialize properly, which the little girl probably need because she's still a little aggressive. <laughs> I think it's just because my health issues, like I've just had surgery, which that went well. I would say I'm feeling like 80% normal. Um, it's just moments where I'm dumb. Like this morning, um, I got some pine pellets for the kittens and I got a bag of 40 pounds and my doo-doo head decided, yeah, I can bring that upstairs. I'm feeling fine. I, I wasn't in pain, but like my abs were like, what are you doing? <laughs> so that, and then I've been dealing with 
weird health issues where the doctors, anyone that has had any kind of chronic health issues know that doctors are just awful and just gaslighty. And I am starting to be convinced that I have celiac disease, but my doctor is really not great because he's basically told me, oh, you should just do an elimination diet, which is like, if you know what celiac disease is, is like gluten, um, if indeed I do have issues with it, this is the worst way to go about it because you should get diagnosed prior. Otherwise, before you get a, an endoscopy, you will have to go back on gluten for two months. And if you start feeling better, you basically have to re-poison yourself. So I'm going to feel awful for two months just so we can see my stomach, my intestine, whatever being destroyed. So like, it's the worst way to go about it. And... Um, yeah, I wasn't able to convince him last time to do that, sent me to a specialist. So I'm currently on a gluten-free diet, and even though I've made mistakes here and there, it's been about two weeks, and I'm feeling much better. Like, not 100%, but I have no more brain fog. I felt dumb 24-7 for the last three years. Like, dumb. Like, I was drunk or I hadn't slept for two days. And I knew it was related to food because it would happen, like, I don't know, like an hour maybe after eating. And the thing is, I didn't have that many, like, stomach issues, but my bladder has been super awful. And now that I'm looking back, when it started, it felt like I had a UTI, basically, on and off for three years. It, it became a little bit less, but, like, for the first, like, couple months, I was so done. I was ready to throw myself on a bridge, to be honest. Um, but, yeah, it felt like I had a UTI. My doctors were like, I don't know. But looking back, that's when I rediscovered bagels. I was eating like two a day. So if it is indeed gluten, then that would make sense. But yeah, um, now I'm debating to go back to see my doctor to force him. Anyway, but I went on a huge tangent, but just all to say that because I've been dealing with so much, that's why I didn't want to keep all the cats. I was hesitating because it's a big responsibility and I haven't been feeling well. And like, what if it gets worse? Like, I don't want to have to rehome them later. Like, is it more cruel to keep them and then rehome them in a couple more weeks or months? Like, you know, that's why my hesitation, um, plus getting them all fixed. And I know some of you mentioned that you were uh, interested in helping them. And at first I said no, because I, again, was planning on uh, rehoming or surrendering two of them to the SPCA. Uh, but now I will accept. The thing is, we don't have Venmo in Canada and um gofundme you have to put your city and i'm not comfortable doing that with youtube i don't know if there's another way to do that um so i'm going to link my ko-fi where you can donate if you want to you can even choose which kitten you're supporting you know what <laughs> okay i'm so easily entertained we're gonna make an ad okay for all of them and you can choose which one you want to sponsor <laughs> I don't know why that sounds really appealing to me. They're currently playing with the litter box, so it's the right timing. So here are the ads, okay? For one dollar a day, you can feed these babies and get them. They actually all need to be microchipped, vaccinated, and uh, sterilized. They need to see that. So we have the first one, Charlie. Charlie is the sweet baby, okay? He he's a sweet, sweet angel. I'm going to put clips because they will not want to stay here because they're all playing right now. But Charlie is her sweet, sweet baby. E is not the smartest of the bunch, but we like it that way because you know how I mentioned quickly, um, I think it was my wrap-up actually, I'm getting confused, um, that baby. Udini figured out how to escape. We'll talk about that more. Um, he never did. He never did because, you know, and this is why we love him. To be honest though, we have to make this sad, right? <laughs> to sponsor him. He's the only cat in this house with no thumbs. And basically, I've been starving him so much that he started eating my bookmarks. Poor baby. Um, lucky for him, he does look like Mama Cat. So that makes him a cutie. But yes, also, for some reason, he doesn't like kitten food. He doesn't care for the wet food nor the dry food. He basically eats the mom's dry food so if you get some on amazon on the wish list know that you are also feeding him that way so <laughs> that is that is charlie option number one i will not be able to hold her for long but 
This is our little girl, Nibbles or Freya, depending on what you choose. She is a cutie, but oh my god, <laughs> she scares me. Uh, she started actually, she's not really doing it right now, but she started deciding that she was a shoulder kitten. Uh, I don't know if I've mentioned that before, but she has been terrifying the crap out of me because she climbs me. And sometimes I'm wearing a t-shirt and she decides that she, she's going to jump on me, scratch all my back, and then she will hang, hang out on my shoulder, which very cute. When you see other people do that on social media, very cute. However, I spend the whole time waiting for her to slap me, which she does every single time. So, you know, that's why I was considering rehoming her because she's been very, very violent. But here's the thing. <laughs> she started being a lot nicer since she discovered that wet food is yummy and I'm the one providing said wet food. Uh, I, the last like two, three days, she had a very cute moment. I have pictures. She will come and cuddle me on the couch and purr. So like, yes, she's evil, but about 5% of the time she's cute. So <laughs> she's definitely very high energy, but that's great because there are other kittens to keep her busy. But yes, just know that if you decide to sponsor her or get her some cat kitten food, wet, ki wet kitten food, know that you're also keeping me safe. <laughs> and we have Harry Odini, aka Chunky, aka my current favorite. Um, he has become a Velcro baby. He's following me everywhere, cuddling me, purring, just a sweet, sweet baby. Unfortunately, He's much smarter than Charlie, and like I said, he figured out how to escape. Before I did that, actually, I would just put my arm, like, in the room, and he would jump and hug it, so we would just, would grab him and we would cuddle. Like, how could I not love him? Uh, but yes, he figured out how to climb it and escape, and the little girl saw him do it, so she started doing the same thing. So, yeah, unfortunately, I cannot keep them in that room anymore i have to close the door now at night otherwise they run around everywhere and they've been doing it they're doing it right now which you might be hearing them. but yes he's such a sweet sweet baby like i said super cuddly when he plays he makes this baby raccoon noise I, i've been trying to like record it it's really hard because he doesn't do it very often but he makes this adorable noise too and chunky because he's always eating always eating we love him for it but always eating honestly his only like negative thing is that he looks like his dad <laughs> he also needs to be checked because he does have some uh, eye discharge a little bit and last but certainly not least mama cat which i'm not grabbing because she's eating maybe later um but mama cat we, we love her we know her uh, a lot of you think that she's really young, but she's not. She's at least five years old because of what I do know. I've been asked many times what happened with the old neighbor that neglected her and left her outside. Ooh, that's nice. Um, never heard from her again. So it doesn't matter because I'm pretty sure she's never seen a vet before. She has not microchipped. So like I said, all four of them need microchip vaccinated and sterilized. She needs it. She's been in heat. I thought I had a few more weeks, but no, she has been singing a sad song of her people. So I'm happy I have headphones because oh my gosh. But yes, Mama Cat, sweet, sweet baby. Honestly, I'm surprised by how sweet she is considering that she was outside neglected going through trash cans. She hasn't been doing it very often inside, which I'm very grateful. She doesn't even try to escape. That's what the old owner club kept saying but she, she kept escaping i opened the door and she doesn't try to go outside and she's in heat so like anyway uh let's not go there she definitely needs to be looked at by the vet uh she does have a lump on her side which seems like it looks like it's gonna be like a fat lump but i am very eager to get her checked anyway so yeah if you decide to sponsor mama cat again we, we need i will get the name we need a name. I'll get the name by the end of this video in the comment section or the poll uh, if we want to call her Persephone or Octavia. Either way, kitty. She loves all the food, okay? If you get any kind of food on Amazon wishlist, she will eat it. She will eat it. Ooh, one fun fact about her. I'm trying to like give you some. She hates soft surfaces. I don't know what she's been through, to be honest, uh, but if there's a blanket or like clothes on the floor, she will walk around it. She will not sleep on the bed nor the couch. She doesn't. If I'm on there, she'll come and get some pets, but she will not sleep on it. She hates soft surfaces. The only way she will sleep on the bed is if I leave like a box or something, that she will sleep on the box. 
I don't know. She started playing also with the babies, which I think is really cute, but the babies are kind of scared of her. <laughs> She's so much bigger. Although, look at her nursing. They're getting so big. So, so big. So, yes, this was the ad section. <laughs> If you want to support the kittens, um, yeah, I need to get them all fixed so she'll get her microchip and vaccines, which are very much needed. Plus, they'll, they'll try and guess her age because, like I said, I know she's at least four or five years old. As far as I know, this was her third litter and her last one. So, yeah, they've been keeping me extremely busy, but I love them to bed, so that's why... Even though the timing is awful, I am very much considering keeping them all forever. Like, fine, maybe... No. <laughs> it's like, maybe later I'll rehome one, you know, if I realize it's not working out kind of thing. But, like, I should keep myself, you know, the door open, whatever, but... Probably not. We'll see. We'll see. But at this moment, I'm considering very seriously keeping all of them. They're good. I'm good. If I get super overwhelmed or super sick, then I would rather try to rehome them to someone that I know instead of surrendering them to the SPCA. It's just the people that I know right now, they've all adopted pets during the pandemic. So everyone is full or they're having babies. So like, it's not the right time. So we'll see. Oh my God, the little girl is on the table. They've been eating my plants. I had to move them on the table and I just got my succulents to flower. No. <laughs> he followed that is that is not something expected from you but yes look at this i have killed so many plants you do not understand what an accomplishment this is for me so let me show you the babies oh my god they're insane is that this is chunky not Charlie oh my god ready for a new update if I look like I'm sweating it's because I am uh, I was sitting in the sun reading this book finished it so I wanted to rush back in review it quickly and go back because I'm gonna pick my next book after but let's talk about the book uh I feel like it took me forever to overall read this book I started right after surgery so I feel like I've been reading it for almost a month um at first I could only read like 30 pages a day I don't know if it was you know the pills <laughs> no just like being tired or what or i just wasn't feeling it that much at first things definitely picked up i was able to you know read in a couple of days uh the second half and i overall enjoyed it i understand why people were saying that it was kind of wholesome i had been warned that wholesome was like a bit of a stretch but I, I get it now um definitely like battle between the good and evil definitely a lot of like progressive values in it which i liked um but i think that my biggest issue with the book is that i wasn't as emotionally invested in it as i wish i had been i can see why people thought about me when they i mentioned that i wanted modern witches yes absolutely anybody else viewed luke as luke from gilmore Girl? <laughs> that was his vibe in my opinion um uh, i kind of wish we had had more of their little um family unit uh towards the end but yes overall i get it not an all-time favorite but definitely one of the best modern witches books that i've read because i haven't read any really good ones so i think i'm gonna give it 3.75 i think my teeth are right that was the sun um so yeah it was fine it was fine i wanted to like it more than i did basically but i get it so yeah it is what it is. Now, I already know what I'm about to read. I'm going to read some Madeline Miller. It's a short book. I can read that today. And maybe I'll have even time to start something else for this vlog. But I do need to watch uh, Mental Park. I, I have about like an hour left in the audiobook. So I'm going to try to finish it today. Because I, I really have to watch it tomorrow. So also before I forget, um, I've been saying how Charlie is such a little angel caught him doing something bad for once this morning 
have a clip of him. Um, that is the worst thing he has done so far. He, he would not stop, by the way. He did it like 10 times. So, of course, eventually I did record it. But yeah, non-stop, non-stop. So, yeah, right now they're all napping. Maybe not, actually. Let's go open the door. I'll probably regret this, but let's go open the door. I just saw some little feet. Mama was playing with them, so I don't think they're napping anymore. Oh, oh. <laughs> I see a little girl right there. Hello. You done with your nap? You gonna go destroy my house again? Hello. There we go. Someone is gliming me. This is very uncomfortable. I'm glad I wore these PJs. Ow. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, this is for everyone that likes you. You're cute 5% of the time. <laughs> the other 95. You're a vicious beast. Yeah, yeah. With you, I never feel alone. These little songs make me glad to call you mine. And you have got my head in the clouds. Oh. Okay, I absolutely loved it. Read it really quickly. Uh, but I feel like I'm, I want like a day to digest it. So I'll talk a bit more in my wrap up at the end of the month. But it's Madeline Miller. Of course, it's going to be great. And I'm currently reading. I already picked up something else. I was in the mood. We're just going to embrace that because the reading slump has been bad this year. Uh, the Master Stool Will Never Dismantle the Master's House by Audrey Lord. And so far, I feel like I am dumb, too dumb, too tired to absorb this, but I'm only at page 16. But I had to turn off my music because I feel like I muted every brain cell. And the cats are also fighting for my attention right now because it was too hot. I came back inside. You can see my cheeks. They all know how to get the attention is to jump on the table because they know I'm going to go and grab them and put them on the floor. Mom was doing that whenever she was in heat the other day. She would like make eye contact and then jump on the island. I'm like, they're currently playing with the bag of the peanuts for the squirrels. Which by the way, did I mention that Steve, the squirrel I've been feeding, that disappeared for months? She came back. You guys were right. I really thought that was it, but she was alive. And motherhood is treating her like shit. <laughs> Look at her. She looks rough. All her hair had grown back and now it's fallen off again you can see that she's been having babies so i've been feeding her peanuts as much as i can and if the little girl can stop playing with them i will keep doing that um oh my god let me show you <laughs> they found the bag next to the door and they've been going absolutely wild so now i have like peanut shell everywhere everywhere they're literally the same size Wow, that I have a day, a uh, roller coaster of emotion. I I was taking a nap, took a shower, <laughs> little nap with the kittens. They're still chunky here. Um, so I've mentioned in the past that I was trying to find a vet for all the cats, right? Well, I thought it would be two cats, but now it's all the cats possibly. And I called probably like twenty before I had surgery and there was one that I was on a waiting list and then there's a couple other places that told me like oh just call me once in a while to see if we have availabilities so I've been neglecting that ever since the surgery excuses excuses until today I saw an ad a vet place that was like oh we have availabilities because everywhere else is booked I was like oh good so I decided to call and I understand why they have availability it's just so ridiculous. Uh, I remember the prices because it is burning my memory now. So basically, since they have no vaccines, none of them, they would need a first appointment to meet them, see if they're healthy, do first vaccine, and then they would need a second appointment for the vaccines and then an appointment for sterilization. So the first appointment and and the second one, uh, so twice you would have to pay between 250 and 300 she said, per cat. And then the sterilization would be $1,250 per cat. 
So after taxes, that's like eight, 8.5K. Who has that kind of money? No wonder people are just abandoning their pets. That's just absolutely ridiculous. Like you are a luxury item, literally, literally. Who can afford that? That's just absolutely insane. So obviously I panicked and I took that motivation to start calling other places further away, but that hopefully would be less expensive. And I have some good and bad news. The good news is that I did find a place that was open to new clients and that is cheaper. The bad news is that they only take pets that are under one year old. So mama cat will not be one of the patient, but I'm on a waiting list. So like as long as the boys get fixed, then you know. So yeah, the three kittens have their first appointment before the end of the month and the prices are a lot more reasonable too. They were saying that there's a discount because it's three. Um, I don't know if the amount she gave me is with the discount, but essentially, hi girly, um, with taxes, it would be about 1500 to do all three cats, everything. So that's, that's much better. I'm assuming the mom is going to be a bit more expensive, but essentially for all four cats, it's probably going to be like almost a quarter of what the other place is charging. That just, <laughs> I told you she was cuddly now. So, like, that's just absolutely insane, though. Who has $8,000 to spend on a cat? And that's if they're healthy, you know? If there's another emergency. I'm, yeah. So, yeah. I'm very happy I was able to find this other place. And I'm gonna keep calling the other places for Mama Cat. But I just need to share because I... I'm shocked because I had mentioned a couple weeks ago, a couple almost months now, that I had heard that a place was the cat actually pushed a button. <laughs> um, thank you, Chunky. Um, yeah, I had seen another you know, place that was charging 800 for sterilization, and everyone was like, This is absolutely insane. Well, this one is worse. This one is worse. And like they were charging the same price for male and female cats. The other place, it's like 300 for the boys and 400 for the girls. So anyway, I'm just in shocked uh, but one thing kind of done and now i'm gonna go and watch mental park Ooh, review for the book very short and sweet love fanny didn't care for the romance Edmund is a poo poo head but i did like fanny so overall i did enjoy the book a little long though i don't know if i was just not super in the mood for classics but it felt it felt long so i think the movie format is going to work for me so yeah I still can't believe the cat <laughs> stopped the recording. Look how cuddly she is now. We've improved a lot. That is what, what food can do to a kitty. <laughs> I totally forgot to record myself watching the movie. So, <laughs> oops. Good news is that this week I did manage two out of three of my challenges. So I've read the two books. The Majesty Royal Coven and Mansfield Park, but I did fail at reading one page of Beware of Chicken. Not one. I knew it. That's why I put one page. I knew it. So yeah, that that was a fail. Um. Oh well. <laughs> There's always next week.